everyone. I hope you're having a great start to your morning. I wanted to hop on and talk to you guys about this. You will know them by their fruit. You will know what an authentic and a true follower of Christ looks like by the fruit that they produce in their personal life. I wanted to start off by telling you guys a silly kind of a made up parable of sorts um, that I'm using to illustrate a point. And I'm going to tell you guys this is not in the Bible. Okay, I'm going to read you scripture that is from the Bible in a minute. But this is just to really simplify it and to help you to kind of understand this concept that the Bible is talking about. Okay. So again, this is not in the Bible. It's a made up thing. Um, but I wanted to tell you guys this because it'll help to kind of, you know, get our perspective in the right place. All right. So let me tell you this story. There are two guys and they are good buddies and they are walking through an orchard one day and they're walking around and there's apple trees everywhere. Like uh, there's this really, really big orchard and they're walking around and they're eating apples and they're looking around just having a great afternoon. And one of the guys looks at the other guy and he goes, hey, I want to show you something really, really cool. And the friend says, all right, yeah, what are we going to go look at? He goes, I want to show you the best apple tree in this entire orchard. He said, there's just something different about it, man. You know, the fruit tastes sweeter. It's different, you know, and I want you to come try these apples. And the guy goes, oh, okay, I guess we can go do that. And so they, you know, trample off down the path and they get to this tree and it looks slightly different from all the other trees. You know, it's still very clearly a tree and it's wedged in the midst of all of these apple trees. And so um, the guy wanders up and he starts to take one of the pieces of fruit off of the tree and he starts to eat the fruit. And um, he goes, man, this is just so sweet. It's so different. It's got such a different flavor from all the rest. And the guy starts to eat the fruit and he goes, you got to try this man. And so the guy walks up, the friend, and he peels one of the pieces of fruit off the tree and he starts looking at it. And then he looks back at his friend. He looks back at the fruit. He starts eyeing the tree up and down and he looks at his buddy and he goes, you do know this is not an apple tree, right? And the guy looks at him kind of shocked and he goes, of course, it's an apple tree. It's in the midst of all these apple trees. Like we're in an apple orchard. You know, this is an apple tree. And he goes, no, it's not. This is a peach. I am holding a peach in my hand. He's like, this is not, you know, an apple tree. And the guy goes, yes, it is. Look where it's located. You know, look at um, the surrounding. It's hanging out with a bunch of apples. You know, it's still a tree. And the guy goes, no, the fruit's completely different on this tree. And he starts showing the guy, look, when I bite into this peach, you know, it drips a lot more because there's a lot more liquid in it. It's sweeter because it's a peach. <laughs> it's not an apple. And he's like, even look at the structure on the inside of this. And he bites into the peach and he opens it up for the buddy. And he goes, look, there's this hard, you know, pit on the inside of this peach that represents the seed. Apple seeds are really small and tiny and there's more than one of them. This only has one big seed that's in the center of the fruit. He's like, this is a completely different entity than an apple tree. And the friend's like... Well, I always just assumed it was an apple tree because it's in the midst of a bunch of apples. And the guy's like, no, you know, it produces different fruit. You know, it could have been that, you know, the farmer, whoever it was, just wanted one tree for their family or something. But this is not an apple tree. This is a peach tree. And the way that the guy determined that was because the fruit was different. Amen. It did not produce fruit that was in alignment with an apple tree. Okay. Now I know that's a silly little made up parable that I made up to kind of illustrate a point to you guys. But the Bible says in Matthew 7, 16, that you will know them, AKA Christians by the fruit that they produce on their personal lives. So, you know, someone can proclaim kind of like this guy in our little made up parable here, you know, I'm an apple tree, I'm an apple tree, or I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But if the fruit on their life says otherwise, you know, it doesn't matter what they say. The Bible says you will know them by their fruit and the fruit is a better indicator than what they are proclaiming a lot of the time, especially if it's been a lot of years and you haven't seen any change. You know, here's the deal, ladies and gents. A lot of times God will address different areas of our life at different times and different seasons when we're ready for it. You know, so it's not to say that we show up perfect the moment that we give our lives to Christ. That's not the way it works. You know, he works on us over the course of our lifetimes to refine our fruit, you know, to get rid of sin in our lives, to help us, to love on us, all of that stuff. So I'm not saying that this is an instantaneous process. It's not, you know, but what I am saying is if you're looking at a person who claims to have been a Christian for, let's say, it's a decade, right? And 
that person's life, the fruit on their life looks exactly the same as when they claim to have gotten saved 10 years ago, you know that something is wrong. Amen. It's kind of like that person is proclaiming, I'm an apple tree, I'm an apple tree, when their fruit shows that they're still a peach tree. You know, it doesn't matter what they say. The fruit tells the full story behind what's going on. Amen. And so, you know, as a Christian, we can tell that something is wrong in our lives if we have experienced zero fruit change during our walk with God. Amen. And you know, I think that a lot of times we get this backwards in our lives as Christians. People will often try to address the fruit without dealing with the root of the matter in their personal lives. You know, they'll try to do things from their own works to correct it. And a lot of times even, you know, this will cause them to have even worse behavior rather than better behavior in the long run. When, you know, behavior change that is done God's way is motivated by his love for us. You know, if that love piece is there and if you're feeling loved and if that that is consistent, the fruit's going to automatically start to line up more, ladies and gents, you know? Um, and so a lot of times people try to do this stuff in their own strength and they, you know, will run into problems and all of that fun stuff. But, you know, I just want to have a real talk with you guys today. You know, um, there's a lot of people who feel like, you know, and think that fruit doesn't matter in your life as a Christian. It does, ladies and gents. It absolutely does because it is a representation of who you truly are as a person and what kind of encounter you've actually had. Amen. You know, if you've got someone who is, and, and I think there's a difference here too. I want to, I want to go into this part too. You know, there's a difference between someone who, um, is still struggling in an area, but really wants to repent and is still caught in a cycle and is trying to get out of it versus a person who feels zero remorse, you know, for being in the sin that they're in and doesn't want to do anything about it. You know, God can work with one heart who's still struggling through some stuff, but who wants to get set free and has a willing and obedient heart, you know, but when you've got a person who just flat outright says, I'm going to do what I want and feels zero remorse, you know, over that situation, zero conviction when Holy Spirit tries to say, hey, this is not a good behavior, you know, that's a good, you know, indication that you're looking at a peach tree instead of an apple tree. Amen. You know, the fruit doesn't align um, because the Bible tells us that, you know, your fruit will start to align if you truly know God. If you are walking in that love relationship with God, you know, that the fruit will align. And so, you know, this is a message that's kind of harder for a lot of people, but, you know, a lot of Christians have lost the fear of the Lord. And by the fear of the Lord, I don't literally mean to be afraid of him. I think there is a little extent of that, but it, what the fear of the Lord means is a reverence. It is a respect for God, for his word and the way that we live our lives and the way that we approach him. Amen. And I think that so many Christians, um, especially in the United States, I feel like, have kind of lost the respect for living a life of holiness. Amen. You know, they don't understand the why behind it. You know, they've kind of taken this part for granted and said, oh, it doesn't really matter. God, you know, God accepts me no matter what. And, you know, while I do think that the grace conversation is extremely important and that we don't, you know, get into a place of trying to get ourselves saved by our own works. You know, it was what Jesus did on the cross. The Bible also equally talks about the importance of making sure that if we are, have experienced a true conversion, you know, that our fruit is going to start to align at some point. And then we're going to start to see changes in our lives. You know, I, I get real worried when I see Christians who are claiming to be Christians, you know, women who are walking around half naked, you know, or, you know, you've got boyfriend, girlfriend claiming to be Christians who are living together before marriage and sleeping around. Hello, I know I'm stepping on toes today. You know, I get real concerned when you've got a Christian who claims they've been saved for 10 years and they're still cussing up a storm. You know, whatever that thing looks like in your life. You know, if there are things that, you know, someone just feels zero repentance about and they're just still living in the midst of this junk. Something is wrong because the fruit's wrong. Amen. You can claim to be an apple tree all you want, but if the fruit says peach, you're a peach tree, and the Bible says you will know them by their fruit. So let's have a conversation about why holiness, why purity is important. And it's not to say that every Christian is going to be perfect. You know, there are no perfect people in this world except for Jesus, right? Um, but, you know, again, there's going to be a fruit change. And, you know, someone who really loves God is not going to want to hurt his heart. And sin hurts God's heart. Amen. Think about like a family member that you really love or a friend or a significant other, you know, 
if you knew that a certain action would really, really wound that person, you know, maybe it's cheating on a spouse, maybe it's, you know, really betraying one of your good friends in a major way, whatever that is, and you had a lot of respect and reverence and care for this person, you would not want to do that action just because of the love that you had for this person. And it's kind of the same way in our walk with God. Sin is a betrayal to God's heart. A lot of times we don't think of it this way, but that's what it is. It is a betrayal to God's heart. It's kind of like having an affair on God, you know? And so when a Christian continually walks in that, God is what he's really trying to say with these verses is something is wrong with the love walk. You know, they don't really love me if they are continually choosing to stay in a place of sin. And if there's zero remorse and if they're not trying to get out of it, you know, there's something that is wrong with the fruit on this tree. You know, the root was never truly affected. There was never true salvation. There was never true change, you know, whatever you want to say in that particular situation. And so I think it's really, really critical that we examine this part of our lives, you know, and go, am I hurting God? You know, am I hurting God's heart through the behaviors and consistent patterns that I have just deemed to be okay that go directly against what the word of God has to say? Amen. You know, that shows us that, you know, there's something wrong, you know, um, with the core behind our love walk with the Lord. Because, you know, again, it's not from a place of striving and trying to fix things ourselves, you know, but if you truly love God, your actions are going to change and are going to align just because of the love that you have for that person, just because you don't want to hurt their heart. And I also want to remind you that sin in our lives is an open door for the enemy to legally come in to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When God tells you not to sin and when he asks you to align your life with good fruit, it is to protect you, not to hurt you or to steal your fun ladies and gents. And so it is for our own best benefit that we align with this place of holiness, with this place of trying to walk in purity in our lives and in our lifestyle. Amen. And that if we do fall, which we will, all Christians will fall occasionally, you know, we repent and we try to get back in line very quickly, you know, with the father's heart and with what he is calling us to do. So I, you know, I'm saying this for myself today too, but for all of us, you know, let's ask God to examine our hearts. You know, let's ask God, God to examine who we are and what we're walking through and say, God, are there any areas of my life where it kind of feels like I'm betraying you right now to you? You know, are there any areas of my life where I have allowed con consistent patterns of sin to just sit in my life and I'm not feeling any guilt or remorse over it, you know? And if that's the case, we need to repent, turn back to God and say, God, love on me. I can't fix this in my own strength. I can't do this in my own strength. You know, I'm asking for your help in these areas of my life. And I pray that you would help me to get back in alignment with your heart. Help me to live, you know, this lifestyle that's going to honor you and that's going to be pleasing to you in my personal life. You know, um, as much as we like to, you know, try to tell ourselves that it's not true, peach trees stick out like a sore thumb in the midst of an apple orchard. And this is, you know, kind of what it looks like when you've got someone whose life is not right. They can wander through a church building all they want. They can pop up on these Christian lives on social media all they want. They can watch the Christian videos all they want, you know, but if the fruit on their life is still a peach tree, there's still a peach tree, you know, there's still, you know, um, there's still something that's really, really wrong, ladies and gents. And so I just want to encourage you guys with that today. Um, and to tell you that the number one motivation, so often the reason that people choose to act right is just because they're afraid of going to hell, you know? And, you know, while that is something that is, you know, critical <laughs> to think about, that shouldn't be our primary motivation for why we are trying to get our lives right. You know, just like that example, if you've got a good friend or a significant other that you don't want to hurt, and you know that an action would really wound or betray them, you know, it comes from a place of love that we, you know, want to act right, that we want to honor the Lord. And a lot of times repetitive sin in our lives is a good indication that our intimacy level with God is off. We have not been spending time in his presence. You know, we have not been, had a true encounter with his love, you know, because his love is kind of like the gasoline that you put in your car. You know, you can have a car, but if it doesn't have gasoline, it's not going very far right? But that gasoline, that love walk, us receiving from the Lord and staying fueled up on a regular basis what is what allows us to move forward, you know, to have the acceleration, the oomph, so to speak, that we need to stay flowing and to stay pure in our personal lives. Amen. And so if you've been kind of feeling like you're in a funk, you know, run to the arms of God, you know, be still and know that he is the Lord, you know, get 
quiet in your secret place, set aside some time for him, pour out your heart to him and go, God, my love walk has been off. And it's evidenced by all these areas of sin in my life. You know, love on me, help me in these areas, God. Show me how this is damaging to me. Show me your heart behind these things. You know, restore me, God. Um, and remember that there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So when the devil tries to hit you with what an awful person you are, and you know, with all of this stuff, you know, run to God. And once you repent, ladies and gents, God does not look at you that way. Amen. You know, um, so it is still important, you know, to walk in this lifestyle of holiness or to try to align our fruit, you know, with what God says. But I also don't want you guys to take this from a place of condemnation or to take this from a place of, oh, you know, I'm being looked down upon or beat up. No, it's not about that. This is about returning to the Father's love and embracing and receiving the love that he has for you and your personal life. And when you do that and when you feel that, your fruit's automatically going to start to line up more. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. I will chat with you again soon.